I'm glad, glad uh, it's fun tonight to be reading with, with Jim Mason. He's an old friend whose writing I really love. And um, this is his first time reading here. And um, so let's have some fun. Thank you all for coming on, on a night like this. Here's Jim Mason. By the way, he, he has a, he's going to be reading a story from that he's got in this Miser magazine, which is this new pre-Cleveland magazine. But he's also got a book of short stories here, which is totally fantastic. This um, Positively No Dancing. I highly recommend picking that up. Okay, here's Jim Mason. All right, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Mike, for inviting me. I've known Mike since the 80s in Brooklyn. He's not only a good friend, but he's kind of like a mentor to me in writing. It's weird to have a mentor who's only like 10 years older than you, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm older than Mike. <laughs> Uh, we have to, we actually, we're both so old that we have to share these reading glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Use reading glasses, but I'm so old that I forgot. <laughs> so I have to wear it gym. And when he called me about it, I couldn't hear him. So I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> right here, you can borrow this from mine. <laughs> right, this is a story based at, uh, in the 70s in Illyria. It's based on my uh, my grandfather. My parents were going to come tonight from Illyria, but they couldn't make it because of the weather. And I, I felt bad because I think this is the first time I'm ever reading a story that doesn't have a swear word in it. <laughs> I wouldn't have to worry about my mom hearing it. But this, this is called Raindrops. <clears throat> Things my grandpa built. Grandfather clocks. The screen at the drive-in. Ray Delapena's treehouse the raindrops at the mall. There were three grandfather clocks, one for each house in our family. His house, my uncle's farm, and my house. Each one was different. I liked the one in his house best. It had a sun with a face that would move across the top as the day went on, and a moon that would follow with the night. The drive-in screen he built was for everyone in town. He worked with a small crew. While they were building it, his friend fell off and died. My grandpa never liked to go up high after that. He did it because he had to, but he didn't have to like it. Ray Delapena was one of the rich kids in town. He lived on Washington Avenue, where we'd go at night on our bikes and spit in the mailboxes that sat at the end of their long driveways. Ray Delapena's dad was a doctor who hired my grandpa to build a treehouse for his son. It had two rooms and electricity and carpeting and a real ladder leading up, not just wood slats pounded into bark. Grandpa told me once I could come along with him and see it. He was proud of it. He was proud to be working for a doctor. My grandpa had come from Hungary and didn't want anyone to know it. He told my mom to pronounce her name differently so no one would know that she was a hunky. I didn't want to see some rich kid's treehouse. I didn't want my grandpa even going over there. I didn't even like Ray Delapena, whoever he was. In our neighborhood, we built a fort in Craig Limpack's backyard out of old refrigerator boxes we found behind Stewart's appliances. There was one room, one room at the back that Craig said you couldn't go into unless you wrote on the wall the initials of three girls you wanted to kiss. My brother stayed in the front. He wouldn't do it. I had no problem with it. I wrote C.F. Carol Feta. A.U. Amy Udovich. S.C. Sharon Caputo. I was still mad at Grandpa about the treehouse. I didn't want to talk to him. But when he came over one day and told me, told my parents about the rioting downtown, I came into the room to listen. A white cop had shot a colored kid, and now the colored people were in the streets downtown, breaking windows and setting fires. It was bad enough that, I mean, I'm sorry, it was bad enough that when we turned on the evening news with Walter Cronkite, even he was saying the name of our town. Elyria, Ohio. That was my Walter Cronkite. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's what you said. My mother told Grandpa he should come stay with us since he lived in the colored part of town, but he said he wasn't going to get chased out of his own home and he wasn't scared anyway. 
The people on our street were scared, though. That night, I sat on my front porch with my brother and friends. We all had baseball bats and sticks. Buddy Mills had an eight ball from a pool table, which he was going to throw at the colored people's heads if they tried to come into our neighborhood to riot. He said an eight ball could kill a man. <laughs> I held a baseball bat, even though my heart wasn't really in it. My best friend, Kim Diedrich, had a father who ran a store on the colored side of Middle Avenue, which was the street that ran down the middle of downtown. He was the only white shopkeeper whose store hadn't been trashed during the rioting. They left it standing because they shopped there, and he acted like they could just as easily have been shopping on the white side of Middle Avenue. It was all the same to him. Plus, Grandpa's neighbors were colored, and every time my mom called him, he said he was just fine. Plus, though I'd never tell my dad, I had a crush on Angela Davis, <laughs> who was the famous Black Panther, who was also on the news a lot. A.D. Angela Davis. <laughs> I liked her afro, and I liked that she had an overbite like me. And besides, her brother was my favorite player on the Cleveland Browns. Ben Davis, number 28, right cornerback, 5'11", 168 pounds. <clears throat> He had an afro that would squeeze out of the back of his helmet. So I didn't have a quarrel with anybody. <laughs> I'd hit them if I had to, though, if they hit me first or if they tried anything with my mom or my sisters, because Buddy had said that's probably what they'd do. They must have just stayed downtown, though, carrying on. That's what the grown-ups called it each night as they gathered together on their front lawns, hugging themselves and looking down the street, listening for the sound of the mob. One other summer, we had heard the Hells Angels were coming to our town. They were going to ride down every street and attack every other house like a tornado. I would count horses. I would count houses from the corner. I hope they. <laughs> I, I hope they'd start with the Dinelings because then our house would be skipped. <laughs> Maybe the rioters would follow the same plan. If so, I hope they start with the Dinelings, too. <laughs> that would mean Bobby Diamond would get it, but that would be no great loss to the neighborhood. He was 12 years old and still sucked his thumb. The only thing he was good for was when we played Lost in Space. He was the only one who didn't mind being Dr. Smith. <laughs> Neither the Hells Angels or the rioters ever did show up. Then my grandpa got a job at the new mall they built out past Route 57. It didn't really matter if the colored people had wrecked it downtown because now we had the mall to shop in. You could go there in the summer and not get hot because of the air conditioning and go there in the winter and not have to deal with puddles and snow. My grandpa built the raindrops. The raindrops were actually long wires that stretched from the ceiling to the floor. There were three sets of them arranged in semicircles. Each set had about 50 wires. On each wire, there were drops of oil which slid slowly down, down to the ground, disappearing behind artificial leaves and rocks. Colored lights were hidden there, shining up. The lights would reflect in the beads of oil, so each bead was a world of color, blues and oranges and yellows and reds. It was like you were in the jungle and it was raining light in slow motion. People would come by and ooh and ah, we'd never seen anything like it. One day, my mom took my brother and me shopping at Robert Hall. It was the worst store at the mall. It was nothing but rows and rows of clothes. I could never breathe in there. Something about all those clothes sucked the air out of the room. I'd tell my mom, anything, anything, that's fine, just to get out of there. Afterwards, she took us to look at the raindrops. My brother sat on a bench. He didn't care about the raindrops. Robert Hall had taken everything out of him, and he just wanted to get a frozen Coke at Woolworths. The raindrops were blocked off from the people by a railing. Grandpa said if you touched the oil, you would get burned. The raindrops would eat away your fingers. So I just looked up and down at the colors. Other people came and looked, too. I watched their faces, proud of my grandpa. Then I heard someone yell, Lydia Wade, get over here. I looked over and saw a colored family a husband and wife and two boys. The woman was calling to a girl my age who was over by Spencer Gifts. I wonder what they were doing here. I wonder if they were planning to start a riot out here at the mall. I wonder if they were going to tear down the raindrops. I wish Buddy was here with his eight ball. 
I wasn't going to let them do it. I told them they'd burn their hands if they touched the wires. I'd give them directions to Ray Del Pena's house. They could go right in there. I'd help them. I moved over towards them. The girl had joined them. She was about my height and was wearing a blue dress like she'd just come from church. I couldn't understand how she could think about rioting in her church clothes. <laughs> the family was full strength now and I had to say something. The girl was right next to me. I wanted to grab her and tell her to keep her hands off. Who did she think she was? You couldn't just go rioting everywhere you please. <laughs> She had a small afro. Her skin was dark and smooth like a pebble in a stream. Her name was Lydia. My grandpa built that, I said to her. She didn't look at me. She was looking up into the lights raining down in slow motion. She was smiling. Her whole family was looking up the same way. They weren't going anywhere. Your grandpa really built that, Lydia asked me, still looking up. Yes, he did, I said. It's pretty, she said. L.W. Lydia Wade. <laughs> Everybody want to get a drink for a few minutes? Take a break?